I have generalized anxiety disorder and the biggest trigger for my anxiety is my health. I don't believe that health anxiety is random. I do believe that anyone who struggles with it has a valid reason, but it's just a matter of figuring that out and connecting the dots. For me personally, I have determined through intensive therapy that my health anxiety stems from my childhood. When I was a child, I experienced and endured a lot of illnesses. If talking about medical related subjects is not something you're comfortable with, then I highly suggest you exit out of this video because I am going to dive deeper into what exactly I was diagnosed with when I was a child. I am not a medical expert, but I do the best that I can to research everything and make sure I know the basics of what I'm telling you. I was born a week later than my due date. I was supposed to be born the week of July 15th, and instead, I popped out on July 23rd. I was a very stubborn baby. I'm a Leo. It checks out. <laughs> As a result of being delivered later than expected, I was diagnosed with meconium aspiration because that extra week that I spent in my mother's womb, I was ingesting my own feces. I realize it's a very gross thing to imagine, but it is the reality of my situation. So, as soon as I was delivered, the doctors rushed me to the ICU and they had to perform a life-saving surgery. They had to cut me open right here on the side of my torso and stick a tube to drain my lungs. I still have the scar on the side of my torso 29 years later. And every time I look at it, I just think about what I had to go through as a newborn. Of course, I don't remember it, but it is still a very traumatic event. After the emergency surgery, I had to stay in the hospital for a month longer. Doctors had to monitor me. I was connected to all of these tubes and wires, and they had to check my progress and make sure that I was getting better and I would be healthy enough to go out into the real world and begin my journey of life. There was the possibility that I would not survive and doctors were very transparent with my mom about that. So it was obviously a very stressful and scary time. Thankfully, I recovered and I was sent home, but a year later, I contracted RSV pneumonia and epiglottitis again. I was dealing with illnesses related to the respiratory area, the throat, and the breathing passageways. Epiglottitis is when the windpipe flap swells up and makes it difficult for a baby to breathe. RSV pneumonia is very common, but it becomes an issue for infants and elderly people. As an infant, your lungs are still developing. <sighs> Thankfully, I also recovered from those two illnesses. But doctors did warn my mom that down the line, I would develop asthma. The last illness that I had as a child, besides chicken pox, which almost everyone gets, was because I ingested too many carrots. Apparently, all I wanted to eat was carrot baby food. My mom tried to give me other vegetables, but I rejected them entirely and I only wanted carrots. So as a result of eating too many carrots, my skin turned orange from head to toe. I was diagnosed with carotinemia, which is ingestion of too much carotene from carrots. You get the gist here. There was just a lot going on for me as a baby. As I got older, I noticed that my health anxiety started to really rear its ugly head. The last stint of extremely debilitating health anxiety that I experienced was a year ago. I was in a situationship with a person who was very toxic. We were not healthy for one another. He really pushed me into fight or flight mode. Dating someone who triggers your mental health is a tremendous red flag and the best 
way to handle that is to exit and go. There's a reason it's not working, so walk away. I wish I had done that, but right before this person and I ended up calling it quits, we had a really bad argument. And during the argument, I didn't realize that I had been picking my hangnail. I had a piece of skin right on my thumb and I was so stressed out during the argument that I had picked it off, which resulted in my thumb bleeding. A few days later, I woke up and my thumb was swollen, red, and throbbing, but I ignored it. There was too much other things going on in my mind. A few more days passed. My thumb is completely inflamed. I can hardly move it. So I go to the emergency room. There is when a nurse diagnoses me with paronchia, which is the medical term for infected hangnail. She prescribes me an antibiotic that I take for eight days two times a day. A week after taking that antibiotic, I wake up in the middle of the night with excruciating stomach pain. It feels as if I'm being stabbed in my intestines. The only thing that makes it feel better is curling up into a ball and rocking back and forth. I'm crying. I have never experienced such debilitating discomfort. The next day, I have to start using the bathroom every 10 minutes because it's the only sense of relief that I can get. It's full-blown diarrhea, TMI, but it's the reality of the situation. I'm at a loss. I cannot figure out what is triggering this because my diet hasn't changed. I'm eating the traditional and standard things that I usually eat. I don't believe that it's food poisoning. This is pretty severe. I have to stay home from work because there's no way that I could get through my day in an office when I have to go to the bathroom every 10 minutes. I call around to different gastroenterologists because I want to see a specialist. I don't want to go to my regular doctor for this. I get an appointment scheduled for the next day. I go there and he's phenomenal. This doctor is tremendous. He listens, he doesn't make me feel rushed. He asked me to break down the timeline. I tell him that I noticed this started happening after taking this antibiotic for a hangnail. He asked me what the antibiotic is. I tell him the name. Immediately, he diagnoses me with C. diff. C. diff is an infection in the colon, and the most common cause for C. diff is taking an antibiotic. But it can't just be any antibiotic, it has to be a specific antibiotic. The antibiotic that I was taking for the hangnail is the highest offender for C. diff diagnosis. I had no idea. He breaks it down what C. diff is. He says it's important we get it treated right away because it can potentially be fatal. To get the official diagnosis, I did have to submit a stool sample in the lab. He calls me back an hour after I submitted the sample and he tells me I test positive for C. diff. I get home, I'm in a state of panic. I immediately whip out my phone and start Googling what C. diff is. I'm on all these different medical forums trying to figure out what's going on with my body right now. Am I going to be hospitalized? Will I die from this? I'm reading all these horror stories. People saying that their C. diff keeps coming back, that they had to get a fecal matter transplant because they couldn't get rid of it. And no matter what antibiotic they took to treat it, it was too stubborn, it wouldn't go away. So I'm thinking to myself that I'm gonna be stuck with this for months upon months. And I'll never get back to living my normal life. I'll never be able to eat the foods that I enjoy, and go out and do what I love. It's ironic that I had to take an antibiotic for an illness that I got from an antibiotic, but the antibiotic for my C. diff is extremely effective. There's a high success rate with it, and 98% of the time, patients fully recover. So I went through the course of that 10-day prescription. For the most part, 
I felt I was back at my baseline, but I did develop post-infectious IBS because I had an inflammation in my colon. I still deal with post-infectious IBS, but it's getting better as the days go on. It's a long journey to recovery, but I've found ways to manage that. Anyway, that C. diff experience triggered a huge health anxiety episode. After that, I started to obsess over my lymph nodes. I would do full body checks looking for lumps and bumps. Lo and behold, I did find two lumps under my chin, which I would learn later on are my lymph nodes and people do have lymph nodes under their chin. I'm panicking. I'm back on the internet doing all this research. I'm hearing the worst of the worst. So I immediately call up my doctor and I schedule an appointment. I tell her everything that's going on. She feels under and she's not concerned. That wasn't enough for me and I still wasn't reassured. So to ease my mind, she offered for me to get some blood work done. She was gonna look at my thyroid, my red blood cells, my white blood cells, everything across the panel. I'm freaking out. I'm in a state of frenzy because health anxiety makes you assume the worst possible outcome. And at the same time, it tricks you into thinking that the only way that you can feel a sense of relief is by getting a diagnosis. So as sick and twisted as that sounds, I was hoping for the worst possible outcome. I got my blood test results about two days after that appointment. I couldn't even sit still. I'm shaking, my heart is racing 100 miles a minute. I open the results on the portal, normal. Nothing out of the ordinary. After that, I would continue going to the doctor for every little issue that I found. The most minor of things, and I'm rushing to the doctor's office. By that point, my doctor is a bit frustrated. She's done everything she can to ease my mind and to let me know that I am completely healthy. But I cannot believe her. I think she's lying to me. It's at that point that she looks me dead in the eye and says, I do think you should go see a therapist because this is getting out of control. Mind you, I had just started going back to therapy again a few months before this appointment. I had been in therapy off and on since I graduated college, but now I was sticking to it consistently. I told her I was going to therapy and I promised her that I would work on it. As I'm walking back to my car, I'm pissed off. This bitch, she's lying to me. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She's gaslighting me. I'm gonna go find another doctor to prove her wrong. Can't get my emotions under control. When I finally did calm down, I had an honest conversation with myself and I fully acknowledged that this is an issue and it's been an issue since I was a kid. <sighs> I don't wanna fully blame myself, but I do wanna take accountability for how I've handled it. I had a conversation with my therapist and I asked her if we could really focus on coming up with coping skills for my health anxiety. Anything that I can do to manage it, reduce it, please, please, please help me because this is interfering with my life. I can't enjoy myself. It's debilitating, it's all consuming. I'll go out with friends or family and instead of having fun and letting loose, I'm in the corner on my phone, Googling symptoms for that week's health issue. When I look back on that infected hangnail I had and how it led to me getting a more severe infection in my colon, it could have all been avoided. And the way it could have been avoided is if I had cut ties with that toxic person sooner. I don't wanna fully blame that person for how sick I ended up getting, but I do believe that if I had better boundaries, I could have squashed that much sooner and walked away. It's not worth your mental health. When you already have an anxious personality, Getting around someone who puts you in a fight or flight response mode exacerbates it even more. Naturally, I've always been someone who is very hyper aware of my body. I've accepted it. I'm very analytical and I pay attention to details. So 
having that type of personality in conjunction with health anxiety doesn't do me any favors. But I am now at a place where I can keep my health anxiety at about a 10%. And that is making great strides. My health anxiety was probably at a 90 or 100% daily. So 10%, let's go. Off the top of my head, I can think of different coping skills that I've integrated into my life that have helped me get to this point. The first is finding an outlet to channel my energy in a productive way. I have a lot going on in my head all the time. The gym has been my saving grace. I go to the gym four to five times a week. Not only am I getting physical benefits, but I'm also getting mental benefits. Working out and being active triggers my endorphins and my stress levels have been hardly there since committing to the gym. It gives me something to look forward to and when I'm at the gym, I'm not thinking about anything else but lifting weights. Journaling is also another fantastic way that I channel my energy into something productive. Journaling is a sounding board for all of the thoughts that I have. It's also a great way for me to see the progress I've made over the months. I love journaling. I wake up every day. I make myself a matcha. I sit down at my desk and open up my journal and start writing it all out. It's phenomenal. I mentioned earlier that I would get on the internet to Google health issues. I stopped doing that. I went completely cold turkey. My therapist and I worked really, really hard to come up with an action plan and that was the number one thing that I had to put a stop to. Googling health symptoms, we all know it doesn't help the situation. You only leave feeling frightened, scared. You can't focus, you can't concentrate. You're catastrophizing. The internet is going to tell you that you have the worst possible disease known to man. It's never going to be reassuring in that regard. I don't know why it is that way. When I had that infected hangnail, I had this irrational fear of going back to the nail salon and I didn't get my nails done for almost three months. I would convince myself that the nail tech would rip one of my cuticles or do something to trigger an infection in my finger again. It's gotten so much better. I just put my focus into other things and I make a deliberate and conscious effort to live in the moment. Because at the end of the day, there are some things that are out of our control. I'm not trying to be fatalistic here, but it's the truth of the matter. For right now, I am completely healthy and I am so grateful and thankful and I count my blessings every day. Making these unnecessary appointments, spending all this money, it's foolish, it really is. I realize this is a lot of ranting, it's kind of all over the place, but the reason I want it to be so transparent is because I know that there are many of you struggling with this. I wanna give you some reassurance that you're not alone and you can absolutely overcome health anxiety. I love you, I appreciate you, and that's all I've got.